Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Season 2 Episode 7 Missionaries. So I'm not the biggest fan when it comes to this show. It's like, it's all right, but it's not really what I was expecting. Yes, I was expecting a much darker take on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. You know, after being a huge fan of the 90s series with Melissa Joan Hart, I was really looking forward to something much darker and more adventurous. But I really hate the showrunner. But the showrunner is the one who created the very interesting comic book. So I'm all like, okay, if the dude created the comic and he's creating the show on Netflix, it should be a slam dunk. But that's Roberto Sacasa Akira for you. He just sucks. <laughs> I do not like him as a showrunner. I didn't like him at Riverdale. I don't like him for the Pretty Little Liars reboot. And how do you screw up your own show? But I do get he wanted to do things differently than that the book. But when you actually read what's about the um, comic, it's a lot more interesting than the show. And so because of that, I've never really been a huge fan of like, you know, the show. And it's on Netflix, but yet where the heck is the budget for the CGI? It's like it's non-apparent at times. And I don't know, it's just like, it's an okay show, it's all right, but I just can't call it a slam dunk awesome show. Also, sadly, and I hate saying this, because I do like the actress and stuff, it took me a very long time to like Kira Shipka as like, you know, Sabrina. It took me a long time. It took me to what? About like season four, I think it was. <laughs> it just, there was something about it. I just could not wrap my mind about it. It was just, it's, it's just something. Like it took me a while to see her in that role because it's really hard to figure out kind of like what Sabrina's about. Is she a hero? Is she a nice person? Is she a bad person? Is she like both? Like what exactly is she? And then there's the like, you know, vibe and look of the show, which just takes you into a whole completely different universe with the way they dress. And something was not vibing with her when it came to that show. Also, I just don't like her hair. <laughs> Do not get me wrong, I do like her as an actress. I like her in other stuff, and I do love her hair. Just not in this show. <laughs> they tried to make it look like the way of the comic, where it's kind of like short bobbish, it's pulled back in that little barrette thing. It's just the way they cut her hair and the length just doesn't look right. Plus, for the second season, they wanted to give her her classic white hair that she had in the comics. But then as time started to pass, her blonde came back and nobody was the wiser. But that's enough about that. So this episode is actually a pretty creepy, very disturbing episode. It took me for a loop and I was very shocked and I was very surprised. I was not expecting what I saw. And, you know, some people are gonna not like this episode. Some people are gonna find it controversial. Who exactly? Religious Christianity people. They are probably gonna hate this episode. And I ain't talking about the ones who are Christians and can watch whatever. I'm talking about the hardcore people who be outside with like the Bible books and stuff like that, or people who get very offended when they hear depictions of like, you know, holiness and stuff. This is why a lot of religious shows don't do well. And when it comes to the chilling adventures of Sabrina, it flips the script. Instead of praising God and Christianity, this show hates on it and it worships Satanism and the devil and stuff. Instead of saying like, oh my God, they will say like, oh my devil. They will say, praise Satan. Um, they will say, oh, you know, God or Jesus is the false, like, you know, God. Like they say stuff like that. So it's going to be a little upsetting to people. And when they see the crown of thorns on somebody other than Jesus, they might get pissed if they watch this episode. So, yeah, if you don't like that kind of stuff, then there's no point in even watching this show. And so, like, you know what I'm saying? Because you ain't gonna like it. And it totally flips the script on angels in this episode. 
I was not expecting that whatsoever and stuff. Because, you know, there are still, it's, it's only the witches who believe in Satanism. It's not like everybody else. Everybody else thinks angels and gods are awesome. It's just, in their point of view, the witches, they're like, ooh, no, terrible, like, type thing. You know what I'm saying? And so, not only are we getting witch hunters in this episode, but the witch hunters are angels. And Sabrina pulls off what they call a miracle, a dark miracle in their thing. And that was something to see. I was not expecting it. And with the gravitas of what the actress brought when she was possessing their thing, it made me respect her as an actress because it's kind of like she is getting, like she is actually playing a character. Like it's hard to tell who Sabrina is when she plays her other times and stuff. But of course, you know, this episode isn't just about that. It's about the other crap that's been happening all season long and stuff like that. So you got to get through like, you know, the drama, drama stuff of what's been going on before. And it's somewhat of a doozy and stuff. So let's get into the other little plot threads before I get into the witch hunting angels and the dark miracle. Okay, this is episode six, not seven, but it's still called Missionary. Anyway, so you have Lilith in there thing who's still in the possession of that teacher's body. And she still wants to make, you know, life miserable for Sabrina. But, you know, the teacher lady husband actually came back home. And while at first she was a little grumpy about that, she is starting to like him because for the first time since like on um, Lucifer and everything, she is being treated very nicely. Somebody actually loves her. And so she's liking this and everything. He wants her to take a trip with him. Well, turns out when they're having dinner, she starts to eat something. Well, the food that he cooked for her and there's like something hard in her mouth. It's a ring. Then it turns out that the husband um, has a glamour spell and it's actually Lucifer in his devil form with the goat face and the horns and stuff like that. She is mortified because she just ate like a man and a man she liked. Now she's eaten people before, but she's upset that she knows she ate like somebody she likes. And so he tells her like, you know, um, how dare you betray me, blah, blah, you belong to me, and all this other crap. So she's in the bathroom throwing up, and she wants to know how in the world was he able to spy on her. And then she looks in the mirror, and she sees one of her crows, one that she killed before. The devil resurrected the crow and made him spy on her. So she just blows him up with her mind, and like, you know, she plots her revenge. And when she plots her revenge, boy, does she plot it. And like in other seasons, you know, she will have a very unique storyline, which is completely and utterly different from that of the comic. And the actress always does a good job. And, you know, it was disgusting seeing her eat somebody who she actually liked. Now, she's like I said before, she's eaten somebody in the past, but we never see it. The show always skims away from things I want to see. I don't technically want to buy a date. I don't want to see nobody eat nobody, but like, if I'm not like other stuff, <laughs> like I'll get into that a little bit later. So let's get into Ambrose and stuff. Ambrose is locked up inside of the academy because he's been framed for killing the anti-pope and trying to kill Father Blackwood. And Prudence is like the daughter of Blackwood. So, and the former, like, you know, lover or whatever of Ambrose. And so I forget what exactly happened, but Ambrose is basically just working out. And he tells the redhead girl or the weird sisters that, you know, if I gotta die, I'm gonna look good dying. <laughs> so he's pumping his muscles up. This is one of the most hilarious things I've ever seen. And... He tries to seduce her to get out of there. It doesn't take much. He just looks at her and is about to kiss her until Prudence shows up. So Sabrina is unable to even see him because she's been kicked out of the school. And she tries to touch like the handle, it burns and stuff. So she convinces her Aunt Hilda to go instead. Aunt Hilda comes up with a really weird way 
to break him out, but we don't really know the specifics of it and stuff. Basically, she cooks a chicken roast. Uh, not chicken roast, but like a full like chicken and everything. And she's going there, and of course, Prudence is always opening the door, and she's all like, you know, I made him this delicious meal, and like, I don't care. You can eat it yourself. You can throw the bones at him. Like, I don't care. And so, for whatever bizarre reason, Prudence accepts, right? And so Hilda goes into the room and she thinks she's talking to Ambrose. And he's all like, you know, I did it and you should like just leave me alone. She knows something is up. At the same time, a different Hilda appears inside the prison and is all like, just confess to what you did, you like dirty, disgusting boy. He knows something's up. It's a glamour spell. It's the weird sisters pretending to be the other person. This, of course, infuriates Hilda. And so, like, but whatever, Prudence, like, eats, like, you know, the chicken and throws the bones at him. Still a weird, bizarre thing. But Hilda did that so he can make a skeleton key. How exactly does he make it? I don't know, because the show won't show us. <laughs> What's the point in having the show with magic if we ain't gonna show how he did it? Basically, he has one in his mouth, a bone, he pulls it out, and it's in the form of a key. Before all this, he was actually being tortured by a demon. Tortured so bad, he's lying on the ground, shivering and quivering and everything. And we don't know the exact extent of what the demon did to him because, like I said before, they will not show us. This is a thing I want to see. It's a demonic looking demon. What the heck did it do to him? Anyways, he busts out and as soon as he's going to leave the school property, a witch hunter shows up he screams for help and then the whole school just runs and tries to like defend themselves against the witch hunters but they are easily subdued in their thing and they are taken prisoner and so now we get into like the witch hunters and sabrina and all this other stuff so when Sabrina is at school, you know, she's trying to talk to Roz because she has no idea what's been going on with her because she's been busy, you know, at the academy and stuff like that with the witches. When she finds Roz, she's in the library and she's listening to a concept tape because she doesn't want to be around the other students because she has now gone completely blind. You can't help but to feel bad for Roz, man, you know, because it's like her whole the females in her family are cursed by witches to go blind and they have a um an insight called the cunning and you know she knows sabrina is like a witch and stuff like that and it's like sabrina has been too busy and has not helped her and stuff and so sabrina is mad and wants to protest this like why did you put her in like in the library well Roz wanted to be there so when she shows up again you know she asking you know like dude like i'm so sorry i was not there for you i've been busy harvey comes in and he pretty much just like gives it to sabrina talking about how like you know um Basically how she's been like a terrible friend and like, you know, she wants to solve it with magic. And he's like, no, like don't solve this with magic. Magic is evil. Witches are evil because Harvey is anti-witch at this point. And Harvey is all like, you know, as soon as like, you know, it was revealed that, you know, you was a witch and me and you broke up and I started dating Roz. All of a sudden, she went blind. So now he's trying to pin it on, like, Sabrina and stuff. And Roz is starting to believe it. Like, you know, and Sabrina is just kind of like, dude, like, we're best friends. You're my ex-boyfriend. I used to love you. How can you say this crap? You know, so it really hurts Sabrina. And you can't help but to feel bad for Sabrina and stuff. Because she did absolutely nothing wrong. And she's all like, not all witches are evil because, you know, I'm a good witch. And he's all like, yeah, but, you know, last season, like, you know, the dead witches tried to kill everybody and stuff. And his family's a long line of, like, witch hunters and stuff. And so you just feel so bad for Sabrina and you feel bad for Roz. But then you have Harvey, like, you know, instigating crap. 
Basically, when she offers to like fix it with magic, Roz is kind of interested at first, but then she tells her no, because you know, it's witches that caused all this crap. And so like, it's interesting where all their storylines go. It's also odd to see Sabrina and Harvey not dating. That did not last long, literally a season. Cause you know, it's always supposed to be them, but in every show they always break up. And he's nothing like his comic book version. He doesn't play football or nothing like that. They completely rewrote like his character. And they completely rewrote Roz's character. She's supposed to be a, a, a friend of me, a nemesis to that of Sabrina, but she's not. And so, like, Lucy, I believe that's her name, uh, or no, Theo now, they changed the name. So, Theo, she, like, she wanted to be a dude. So, Theo's all like, you know, Sabrina, I can't believe y'all are treating her like crap. Like, she is our friend. She helped me with basketball, with magic. And, you know, she helped, you know, you, but, you know, of course, Harvey's thinking about how Sabrina brought his brother back from the dead and that kind of screwed things up. But in a way, she really digs deep into, like, their minds and to the point where they're kind of like, maybe we shouldn't judge, like, Sabrina and stuff, you know? So then one, when Roz is at her house, because Sabrina gave her, like, a little charm bracelet, but Roz took it, and, you know, anyway... At first, she didn't want to. When she touched it, she saw a vision of Sabrina being stabbed to death by a man. She calls the place and she tells Sabrina like, to get out and she sends Harvey over there. And this is where the angels come into play. So the episode starts off and we see Luke, um, the guy who Ambrose was dating in season one. He has disappeared for all of like five um, episodes this season and nobody knew where he was. So Ambrose just went his own separate way. He is being tortured by a man dressed like a very religious Christian missionary person. And this dude is all like, you know, has that zealot look in his eyes and everything. He has like a buck knife with a Christian cross on it. He has a crossbow. And basically he says, you know, like he's a witch hunter and he's looking for the academy um, where all the rest of the students are. And he wants like, you know, Sabrina. So being tortured and stuff, Luke finally just like, you know, fine, I'll tell you and everything. But he tells him you'll never be able to get into the academy because no human mortal can open the door. You need a witch or a wizard, oh, not wizard, but a witch or a warlock's hand. So the missionary dude chops the dude's hand off. We don't see it chopped off on screen, but it's implied. That is some gruesome mess. And this is one of those things where they should bring on the gore. So anyways, the witch hunters aren't just normal witch hunters, they're angels. And they belong to the order of the innocent. This is what's really strange and peculiar. It's like, whose side are you on? Technically, the angels want to rid the world of witches and warlocks. Not every witch and warlock is good. Some are very evil in their thing. And so it's, and then when you do see the good witches, it's kind of like, well, whose side are you on? That's what's so fun about this episode, you know? And so Sabrina and Nick have been broken up because, you know, he cheated on her. So he's drowning his sorrows at the bar. And so like when she is home, like all of a sudden this, the, the missionary dude comes to her place. And he's all like, you know, ah, you know, I need like a drink of water. Can I talk the word to you? And she's all like, nah, I belong to a different religion <laughs> and everything. Now, what's odd about Sabrina this season is that when she, her hair turned white and she started hanging around the weird sisters and stuff, I thought she was going to go down a more dark path, but that did not happen. Anyways, so he's like, you know, trying to charm her and ask her about her religion and she don't want to talk about it. And then that's when Harvey called, and that's when uh, Ross called, talking about, you know, I had a vision, there's a man in your house, he has a knife, he's gonna kill you. So, you know, he does try to kill Sabrina, and she's able to get out the house and put up, like, a, a spell barrier. 
he's able to break through it by reciting like a Bible verse and stuff. So she hightails it on her bike and she gets on out of there. It's weird seeing her ride one of those old fashioned 1950 bikes. So then she heads to like her auntie's magic shop. But her auntie um, was paid a visit by like another uh, member of the order, a female missionary, and she tries to like kill them. So what Hilda does is that she takes the ring off her boyfriend, kisses him, so he can turn into that weird demon thing. We don't get to see the carnage that happens because this show just shies away from it for some bizarre reason. So ugh, it just shies away from it again. When Sabrina goes there, the place is a mess and she asks what happens. Basically, the little girl missionary got away and her demon boyfriend took care of her and scared the piss out of her and stuff. It would have been nice to see that. This is one problem I have with the show. And so Sabrina's like, crap, dude, they're heading to like, you know, the um, academy, but she can't get there. So she has to find a way like, you know, to get through like the barrier spell and all this other crap. Um, this is when like, you know, Nick later on gets attacked, him and the bartender. The bartender gets shot with an arrow and then he goes to try to kill Nick only for the bartender to somehow live. And he's all like, you know, he's special or they you know like some protection spells and he like stabs the missionary dude. And then he puts him in a painting. We don't see him put him in a painting. We are told that because once a freaking again, they don't show us this crap. And so there were three missionaries. Now there's two and they head on over to the academy as the witches and the warlocks are trying to fight them off. They can't because the Bible verses are blocking their spells. They take them to like a church. This is when, you know, Nick and Harvey, they meet up with Sabrina. Um, Harvey has like his rifle because he wants to like protect Sabrina and all this other stuff. Because he still does care about her, even though he's acting like he don't. So over at the church, the missionary people, what they do is they make you have penance. Once you do, you kind of like, you know, I guess you, your face boils up and everything. And I guess you like set some fire and then you go off into like heaven and you're like cleansed or something like that. It's very torturous and it's very painful. You can either have that or they're just going to slit your throat. Those witches who refuse, they literally slit their throat. So they slit one girl's throat. There's this warlock dude. He starts re uh, repeating the Bible verse because he wants to be penance and uh, forgiven and all this other crap, but it's too painful with the balls on his face. So then he's all like, you have to kill me or something like that. I'd rather die. So he gets his throat slit. And the weird sisters are literally on like, um, what are those pike stakes, whatever, about to be burnt alive. In comes Sabrina to save the day. And the weird sisters are kind of happy Sabrina is there, but Sabrina is trying to like talk to him, but it's not working. They bind her power with a um, crown of thorns on her head. And it's weird that the weird sisters are happy Sabrina is there because when Sabrina went to Prudence about the whole Ambrose thing, you know, she's all like Prudence was being like nasty to her and about how we are not friends because you only want to be my friend when you want something. In season one, the weird sisters were terrible to Sabrina, even trying to kill her at one point. So they're not good whatsoever. But Sabrina's trying to talk her way out of it and the dude just uploads arrows into her, killing her and everything. So as the two missionaries are about to burn the weird sisters, all of a sudden Sabrina wakes from the dead. Her eyes are like white and demonic and she's floating in the air and there are flames shooting from her hands and she's talking in a very demonic voice telling the missionaries convert the satanism and everything and all this other crap and they're like no but then it's like something overcomes them because sabrina is possessing them and it's like what the heck is going on <laughs> So they are literally like, you know, chanting whatever Sabrina is chanting, the demonic stuff. Then their bodies literally set on fire and they are burnt to a cinder. Then, you know, like 
Sabrina, so all the witches are happy and everything because Sabrina killed them, but then the witches are freaked out because Sabrina does something nobody has ever done before. She performs a dark miracle. She tells the two witch and the um, witches and the witch, well, actually the witch and the warlock who got their throat slit to rise. She brought them back from the dead. No other witch has ever been able to do that. So they are very shocked and awe at her power. And in comes Harvey. <laughs> and he's just like, Sabrina. <laughs> and she turns around in the slowest, creepiest way that gives you goosebumps and everything. Like, you can feel the vibe she is doing. If they would have kept this up for the remainder of the season or the series, I would have, like, you know, probably been like, okay, this is going on that dark level. And Sabrina's going on that dark level instead of, you know, the silly 90s vibe that, you know, the other character had. So, I want to see where this goes. And, of course, they dropped the ball. They always drop the ball on this show. Roberto. <laughs> But you can feel the vibe in her demonic state. So how exactly is this possible? Well, here comes the spoiler for other seasons. Sabrina, no matter what version she's in or what adaption she's in, has always been a half-human mortal and a half-witch. And that's how she was presumably on this show. But then the creator decided to do something different, go away from his comic. He decided to make Sabrina half human mortal and half that of the child of the devil. Basically, Sabrina's mortal mother had an affair on her warlock husband with that of the devil and Sabrina was made. So Sabrina is not even a witch, even though they still refer to her to the end of this series as a witch. And not only that, but she's not even a spellman. She's not related to Hilda, Zelda, or Ambrose in any way, shape, or form. But yet she still lives with them and calls them her family. This is that weird disconnect of the show. So technically she is half like demonic devil and human and stuff. So this is how she was able to perform that stuff. Later on, she loses this power. They create two versions of her and it just goes in a weird kind of way. And then they kill her. Only for her to be resurrected on Riverdale many seasons later. And, or many years later, I should say. And so it's weird knowing that Sabrina is not a witch and she's not a spellman. This is what they should have continued to the end of the series to make it different. But they don't. They drop the ball. They still call her a witch. She is still a good doer. She is still acting like she's a spellman and everything, even though she is not. She's a morning star. So it's weird. This, shit, this show literally never knows what it wants to be about. It, it comes up with all this stuff and then it never falls through on it. Then they leave all these plot holes like completely open and they never resolve them. So yeah, but you can watch this show still on Netflix. Now wasn't that spooky? Alright, well I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>